Assuming debate, the honorable member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm very pleased to be able to speak on this, particularly after some of the comments of, of the last speaker and some of the people questioning. Uh, back in June of 2009, this House passed, a couple of days from that date, unanimously a motion and, and, and Mr. Speaker, I, I hope they're attending to this because part of the motion that this government side voted unanimously for included expanding and increasing CPP, OAS, and GIS, okay, establishing a self-financing pension insurance plan, ensuring workers' pensions go to the front of the line in the case of bankruptcy proceedings, and in the interest of appropriate management that the uh, stop the bonusing that went on at the CPP. That passed unanimously in this House. That served as a roadmap for the next three years. In fact, I was the critic that put that motion before the House, and I went to uh, over 50 town hall meetings across the country, from B.C. to the East Coast. And the reason we did that, Mr. Speaker, is there's 12 million working people in Canada that have no pensions and no savings. Now, we hear all this talk about the, our, uh, you know, the, our, the PRPP, and the fact of the matter, the PRPP is nothing more than a fancified RRSP. And the real flaw with the PRPP is it's not mandatory. Here, here. And one of the points that was made is the disposable income of Canadians, and we are very concerned about the disposable income of the Canadians. Now, one of the things you might want to know that would be helpful, Mr. Speaker, is a person with a $30,000 a year income would pay an annual increase of $117.86. That's six cents an hour. Now, that point, 43%, point, 43%, I want to be very clear on that, less than a half of a percent of income. If they made $47,000 a year, that would equate to $185.43 a year. Yes, matched by the employer. We're not trying to hide anything from Canadians. But we talked about a phased-in period, and the purpose of the phased-in period is a sensibility to the tenuous of the economy at this point in time, so it would take some time to develop this. But, you know, 93% of Canadians today Working Canadians are in the Canada Pension Plan. So you say to them that the OECD looked at the Canada Pension Plan in 2008 and said it was funded for 75 years, and we agree with them, Mr. Speaker. We think it's in good shape. We think it's been well managed over the years. It's a vehicle that's very important to Canadians, and if you modestly increase that over seven years to phase in the payments, and no, it's not going to double anybody's pension plan today. This is putting the money away for the future. But one of the things it does as well, Mr. Speaker, that I think is very, very important, it allows Canadians the vehicle to put some of their money in. These 12 million people that are putting no money aside at this point in time, they're not able to, for whatever reason they're choosing not to in most cases, are not being able to participate. In 30 years' time, if we don't have a vehicle that gives them the kind of protection that the major increase to the Canada Pension Plan will do, what's going to happen? They're going to hit a wall. They're going to hit 65, and they're going to have very little. And even if they participate in a PRPP, what good is $100,000 or $60,000 they manage to save there relative to the outcome that could come from a well-invested Canada Pension Plan it would actually provide security for them and their families. Mr. Speaker, this is critically important. We're talking about future generations. We're talking about our own grandchildren here. We're not talking about today's workers to that degree. This is down the road, but it is so vitally important to people. And when I crossed the country and I talked to people in, in towns from Thunder Bay to, to the East Coast, uh, Port Barrington, I think was the name of one community, that I was in on the East Coast. Uh, and the member from Victoria, I was in his riding for two meetings as well. And that member today has the file uh, on behalf of the NDP and has put today's motion forward. But what I think is sad is that we had to reach the point of push it, putting today's motion forward 
is, of course, once again, to a party that had already agreed with this. Here, here. And they agreed with this in 2009, Mr. Speaker, even after we had the major downturn in the economy where people understood that going forward is going to be somewhat difficult. But how difficult is it going to be, Mr. Speaker, for families if we don't do something? Now, we saw the circumstances before where we talked as a party, as the NDP proposing nonprofit daycare for families, and the response that came from the other side was $100 a month. Anybody know what the cost of daycare is? It's in the hundreds of dollars per week. So that didn't touch it. And now we have another Band-Aid solution from this government and the PRPP that doesn't even remotely come close to what's going to be needed. And I want to take you back again to something I said a few minutes ago. 12 million working Canadians are not prepared. They're not prepared for the future, and it's the responsibility of today's government to help them prepare, to give them the vehicle they already have. Now, the portability of the Canada Pension Plan, right across the country, Mr. Speaker. It's a completely open thing for them, but the crucial thing about the Canada Pension Plan is it's mandatory. How many times have members here, when they were 25, 35, 45 years old, said, oh, we're going to save this amount of money, we're going to prepare for, for this contingency, and you get there and say, oh my goodness, I only saved half or only saved a quarter. That's where the mandatory part comes in. Now, yes, the, the employer community has a responsibility along with them, and that puts us into a place where some people call it into question. We have to have it open so that they can take part in the Canada Pension Plan. We have to ensure that we look at vehicles within the Canada Pension Plan that allows everybody who works, including employers, in. We have to look at the possibilities. There's a great number of business people out there who are relying totally on the resale of their business to, to supply their retirement. And how many have we seen whose businesses, because of changes after 40 years in business, what you may have started as a business may not be viable, may not have the cash value that you anticipated. So they are in a tenuous position relative to the future as well. This is a model that can be put to use for all Canadians, to the benefit of all Canadians, to ensure dignity in retirement. Now, I know it's not part of today's motion, but we talked originally in that motion back in June of 2009 about an increase to the guaranteed income supplement. I'm saying that because I want to talk again about the desperate situation some people find themselves in. There's many people, senior citizens, thank you, Mr. Speaker, there's many senior citizens who live on about $1,400 a month. And in the 50 town hall meetings, I had four occasions where I had people take me aside after the meeting and say to me they ate cat food to get protein. That is no way for any of our seniors to have to live in this country. I'm not saying that to embarrass anybody. I'm saying that, that that's a cold, hard fact of what people face who aren't prepared for their retirement. Many of these people are not sophisticated in their approach to retirement. And I, I want to stress one more time, just before I finish, Mr. Speaker, that $30,000 a year, the cost would be $117 per year, six cents an hour for a working person on that salary to increase their Canada Pension Plan to a point that gives them the opportunity to dignity. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm very close to the end of my remarks. I want to say one last time for the members to take the time to look back to the June 11, 2009 motion and what this government unanimously supported at that time the very thing we're talking about here today. And thank you, Mr. Speaker.